everything that happens in the scripture does so for a particular reason. And likewise, everything that goes on into your life also happens for a reason. And what is that reason? That God might be glorified through you. See, many people think, well, you mean to tell me that the only reason that I exist is to bring God glory? And the answer is, that's right. Many people hear that and they simply turn away. They think that is so uh, insignificant, simply to be a vessel of God's glory. But when we submit to that call, that's when life gets exciting. That's when life gets joyful. That's when life gets adventurous. And what we see is that so often in the scripture, when God moves, especially moves for the purpose of restoration, for bringing about a change, positioning someone where they can be that vessel that belongs to God, that change, those events happen specifically on the Sabbath day. In the New Testament, in fact, we could say even more so than the Old Testament, the New Testament emphasizes this term Shabbat or the Sabbath day. In fact, many of the miracles that Yeshua performed precisely took place on the Sabbath day. And that wasn't an accident. It was to reveal to us an important biblical truth. You see, the term Shabbat, well, it literally means to cease or to pause. And that pausing is for a purpose. It is to regain things. It is like rebooting so that we can move forward. Shabbat simply is not the end of the week, but really, Shabbat positions us for a new week. It is very significant if we go all the way back to Genesis that we see that man was created on the sixth day. And if we look the very last thing, that was created on the sixth day, traditionally towards the end of the sixth day, so that we could first and foremost experience Shabbat. And it was the experience of Shabbat that changed everything. It was the preparation for a new week. Now, we know, we've talked about this, that biblically speaking and traditionally in Judaism, there's a connection between Shabbat and the kingdom of God. And it's only when we have that kingdom experience. What is that? Well, last week we talked about the term salvation. And when we have a salvation experience, when we find forgiveness from our sins by the blood of Messiah, be, be, because of the work of Yeshua, what's the outcome? Well, we are restored back to that right relationship with God and we can begin to have a kingdom experience. We can begin to live in light of that coming kingdom. Well, let's begin to get your Bible. Look again to John's Gospel and chapter 9. Last week, we left off with people asking this blind man who now sees, where is that one who healed you? And he says, I do not know. And notice their response. John chapter 9, let's begin in verse 13. We read here, and they brought him to the Pharisees. Now, the Pharisees were part of the religious leadership of Israel. They weren't the only leaders, that they were probably the ones who were, were most visible at that time before the people. And they live in a very, very, uh, how we could say, public life, that is, they lived out their religious beliefs in a very public manner. They wanted people to see them as spiritual people, as leaders. And therefore, it's not surprising, after this miracle, and what miracle? Well, not just that a blind man was healed, but a man who was born blind, he regained his sight. He saw properly. And this was a miracle of great significance. They understood that in a unique way, God was moving. Let me ask you a question. Are you able to perceive the movement of God in and around your life so that you can respond? When something happens, do you see significance in that? 
and wanting to be able to discern that significance so that you can respond properly. Well, that's what this passage is admonishing us to do. So because of this act of God, they knew that God was at work. Never before had one born blind ever regained his sight. And therefore, they brought this man to the Pharisees who was formerly blind. And it says, and this is emphatic, for it was Shabbat when Yeshua made the clay and opened up his eyes. Now, notice what's emphasized here. Not the opening up of his eyes, but making clay on the Sabbath day. And according to pharisaical law, not according to a right understanding of the Torah, but according to the pharisaical law, this was a violation of Shabbat. You can't make something on the Sabbath day. Here's the problem. They missed out the purpose of what Yeshua did. He did that for the right of restoration, to bring about a restoration to this man so that he would be what? Well, one of the purposes of Shabbat is restoration. What happens during the week, those six days of labor, is that we get oftentimes focused upon this world, the physical labor, and we miss out on our call. So Shabbat is a call to stop, to pause, and to regain a right perspective. So it wasn't an accident, it wasn't a violation that Yeshua specifically on the Shabbat day made that clay. So they're emphasizing it wrongly. They say it was on the Sabbath day that Yeshua made that clay and he opened up the eyes of the blind man. Verse 15, therefore again they asked him and the Pharisees, that's who was asking, how did you see? And he said to them, he set clay upon my eyes and I washed and saw. So once again, what's emphasized is this washing. He put clay upon my eyes and I went and washed, that is removed. There was a separation and here's the point we didn't talk about last week. But there was a separation between that cursed ground. What's cursed ground? It's related to sinful human flesh. And so there was a separation when this man went with this cursed ground. Why do I say cursed ground? Well, we talked about this in our previous lesson. Because Yeshua spat upon that ground. And spitting in the Bible is synonymous with cursing. So the ground was a curse. A curse is related to sin. We were created from ground, so it's speaking about our sinful condition. And this washing in this pool of Siloam, this washing separated that cursed ground, that human flesh, in other words, that is staying with sin from this man. And here's the message. If we're going to see things properly, if we're going to have the illumination of God in our life, we have to have a separation from sinful human flesh. We're called not to live in sin, but to walk in the newness of the life. You know how he says that? Walk in the spirit. So in this passage of scripture, he says to him, or this man says, again, what he did was this, clay he set upon my eyes, verse 15, and I washed. And I saw, verse 16, therefore, some of the Pharisees, they were saying that this man is not from God because on the Sabbath, the Sabbath, he does not keep. Now, once again, is that accurate? The answer is no. Yeshua kept the Sabbath, but he also, and here's the important point, he also utilized the Sabbath day for the purposes of God to bring about restoration, to put someone in their proper position. So the Sabbath is very important. It was these Pharisees, certain Pharisees, it says here, that did not understand the spiritual aspect of what was going on. 
And because they didn't see 